in the forest you'll find a fabulous banquet, a fairy wall. If you close your eyes and you open your mind, the veil disappears and you'll see it all. Hi my angels, it's Haley Reese and for today's video I am finally giving you guys the incredibly highly requested scary story of something paranormal that happened to me that truly terrified me to the core. I never mentioned this story in any of my astral projection videos because I really wanted to focus on the positive side of astral projecting because there really is a lot to it and I never wanted anybody to take away from a video based on astral projection solely that I had a terrifying experience. But I figured since it is always better to just be educated or aware of things that could happen when you do astral project, I would share today's story with you. Before I get into today's story though, I would very quickly like to thank today's video sponsor, Scribd. I have worked with Scribd in the past and I absolutely love them. Scribd provides you with a huge library of books, audiobooks, magazines, and a bunch of other reading materials. Suggestions can be given that are catered to your interests so you never run out of things to read or audiobooks to listen to or anything in general. There are currently a hundred million active users and it's available both on Android and Apple devices. I personally have been enjoying reading Milk and Honey by Rupi Kaur on Scribd. She's actually from Toronto as well and she is just an unbelievable poet and her poetry just gives me goosebumps almost every single time that I read it. It is timeless, it is incredible. So if you guys wanna check out that book, I have a link at the very top of my description. All you have to do is go ahead, click that link and you'll have 30 days to read the book completely for free. But I should note that Scribd in general is super inexpensive for what you get. It's $8.99 a month which is way cheaper than any other services like it, which is amazing. So like I said, all you gotta do is click the link at the very top of my description and get reading for free for 30 days. Thank you so much to Scribd for sponsoring today's video. And without further ado, let's dive right on into this story because it is, it's one that I'm kind of nervous to even relive mentally, but let's get into it. So in my video about astral projection, where I basically took you guys through everything to do with astral projection, what it is, how it occurs, and that a lot of people actually astral project completely on purpose and they're able to control it and all of that jazz, I mentioned that I had astral project as a child. I'd had a couple experiences and there was nothing significant to them in my childhood. I just remembered waking up and looking back and being able to acknowledge and see that my physical body was sleeping and my astral body or my soul was out roaming and doing goodness knows what, just walking around the house to be honest. Now, my experiences were very in this worldly, meaning that I would come out of my body and be in my room a lot of the time. Actually, one of the more interesting aspects of one of my experiences is I was able to acknowledge my body sleeping behind me, but I also saw my cat with me and my cat's body sleeping, which I found really fascinating because there's a lot of debate as to whether or not animals have souls. Now, when this happened to me, it was very earthly. Like I was saying, I just was in my house and then I would wake up back in my body, things like that. I never went to any astral planes, which is why I've always really wondered whether or not I truly astral projected or if I just had out of body experiences. That's kind of up for debate even to myself. I really don't know what to categorize it as, but a couple of times throughout my childhood, I was definitely able to leave my body and look back at it sleeping. Like I mentioned though, it was not intentional. It wasn't something that I went to sleep knowing that that night I was gonna come out of my body and have these experiences. Now the story that I didn't tell in that video is one that whenever I think about this experience, I don't understand what it means and it really actually scares me. Um, and the reason, like I said earlier, that I didn't talk about this prior is because there's so many positives with astral projecting. It's a really fascinating subject to discuss in general, and I didn't want one of my scary experiences to defer people from wanting to astral project or wanting to look into it more. Like I said, this could definitely be and probably is more of an out-of-body experience rather than astral projecting. but. I'm gonna try to recount it as best as possible. This happened when I was 16, so it's many moons ago, and it's definitely stuck with me and stayed in my memory 
very vividly because of how traumatizing the experience was, but it was a while ago. I was actually home alone this specific night. My sister wasn't there, none of that. And I was alone in this house and I was about 16, 17 years old, I would say. And this specific night, I just went to sleep as though nothing was out of whack. I didn't feel scared in my place. I didn't feel like there was any entities. I didn't feel any negative energy prior to falling asleep, which I find interesting in hindsight when I look back at how this whole night was about to play out. I found it very odd that I didn't sense anything off in the energy of the space in general. So all of a sudden I wake up and I see the shadow of this little girl at the very corner bottom of my bed. And she was exactly everything you would picture out of a horror film as far as a child goes. Like when you picture the ring with that long black hair and like that white dress and face covered and just this creepy child's voice, like she was exactly that to a T. Now I have a lot of theories as to why it was shown to me this way or this energy was shown to me this way and I think it has to do with one of my greater fears is seeing a demon child like seeing a child completely possessed or seeing a child ghost that's evil is like a really big fear of mine and I think it has a lot to do with the purity and innocence of children and when you take that and you turn it into something terrifying it just scares me so I feel like that was a big reason why whatever this was appeared to me in this manner so I looked down to the bottom of the bed and I can't see or make out the face of this small child, but I know that it's a girl and she has long black hair and she's wearing this white dress. And for a minute, I just hear this kid's whispering, but I couldn't make out what was happening. And so I freaked out thinking that I had actually woken up and saw this ghost or child thing in my room. And I jump out of bed and go to the corner. I should note the way that my room was set up was when you came in the door to my room, to the left, there was my like night table, I had a bed in the center, and then I had like a, a corner obviously, but there was like a little vanity there, my desk, and then you would walk around to leave the room. And so she was at the bottom corner up there. So I jumped up out of bed and I threw myself into the corner. I'm standing there and she's not disappearing and nothing's happening and I feel kind of cornered. And it was kind of foolish of me, if you think about it, to jump to that side of the bed. I should have jumped to the opposite side of the bed and ran out, but I hadn't. And so now I was in this corner and I felt like I was trying to figure out like how I was going to get around this thing in my room, which this sounds so crazy. I know, but whatever. <laughs> and I look over and all of a sudden I see something really strange and that's that my body is there sleeping. But here I am in the corner of the room face to face with this almost faceless child because the hair was in the way standing there. And I'm making this sound like this was a very long time. This was not a very long time. This was within probably the matter of seconds. It just felt like a long time. So I recognized that I'm sleeping there. And then I'm really, really confused. And this thing starts to actually talk in this demonic, creepy child's voice, which is about as terrifying as you could imagine. And it starts reciting this verse that I can't remember for the life of me. And thank goodness I can't remember it. But I remembered that the principle of this verse was if I agreed to work with her, then I would be given everything I could ever want in life and everything would be perfect in my life. And I remember being like, um, no, I want nothing to do with you. What do you mean work with you? Like you're, uh, you're terrifying. So I hopped over my bed, which is so weird when you think I'm laying there sleeping and then my, my spirit or whatever was hopping over the bed. And I ran down the bottom of the stairs and I looked back and I saw this thing still at the top of the stairs and the thing starts to come down the stairs and it's like gliding over top of the stairs, which just sounds so insane. And I ran out of my front door and I looked back and I said, I will never be a part of whatever this is. And then this bus pulls up and I get into the doors of the bus and there's literally like nothing in the bus, but the bus is really like white, like really bright light. So I climb into the doors of the bus. There's no driver in it. It's just a really like white bus. And the bus starts to go and all of a sudden I wake up in my room and I look over at my phone and it was three like something in the morning. And I can't say it wasn't exactly three in the morning. It was probably even closer to four in the morning. 
but I looked over at my phone and I was like terrified. Now at this time I had a Blackberry. This was like right before I transitioned into an Apple device. So I had my Blackberry and I remember I posted on, maybe I was closer to 15 then, actually. I think I was closer to 15, I wasn't 16. I definitely wasn't, I may have been 16, but I definitely wasn't 17 because I know I had a iPhone at 17. So I was probably actually closer to 15. And I remember that I was so terrified by this whole experience and I kept thinking that this thing was gonna come back that I even like changed my BBM status to like anybody up message me, which led my mother who I had on BBM the next day to quiz me thinking that I was out running the streets at this time. Now here's the thing, it definitely could have all been a dream, a million percent, but given the experiences that I'd had in the past, I kind of felt like the fact that I saw myself sleeping and I woke up like jolting, like as though I just like came back, it just seems as though it was maybe an out of body experience, but it doesn't make sense like what that thing was saying. So maybe in a sense, I had dreamt this whole entire thing to be similar to like an astral projection experience I had or out of body experience that I had. But nonetheless, the whole thing chilled me to my core. I was like sick to my stomach for days over it. I was scared to go to sleep. I kept thinking that I was gonna go to sleep and I was gonna be woken up or taken out of my body and see this terrifying demon child again. Thank goodness I have never had an experience like that since, never again. I definitely have had astral projection or out of body experiences since, not recently, not within the past like couple of years, but I did have it after that and none of those experiences were anything negative or scary. But that experience always stands out to me and I don't know if it's symbolic. I mean, anything that we experience, we could read into and we could try to find hidden messages behind it. But I definitely think that maybe it was just something scary or evil trying to get in and mess with like the white light that I was putting out and trying to push into the world. But the experience definitely terrified me and it definitely made me a lot more cautious when I look into certain things in the world. Well you guys, that is my experience with my astral projecting or out of body experience. Let me know in the comments below if you guys think it was honestly just a really bad nightmare or if you think that I really did come face to face with some sort of an entity. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have had any experiences similar to this and what you think it all meant. But that is my scary experience. At the end of the day, I truly believe with all of my being that white light will always conquer anything dark, anything negative, and that if you believe in the power of light and love and kindness, or God, whatever it is that you believe in, that combined with a soul that wants to do good will always overcome anything that could ever cross paths with us. And I truly believe that every now and then, especially in my life, negativity or darkness will try to find a way to overcome. But as long as I stay true to who I am to my core, I just, I know that I'll always be okay. Thank you so much to Scribd for sponsoring today's video. Again, I really appreciate it. I love you guys. Make sure you guys go ahead and click the link at the top of my description. Read Milk and Honey, you will not regret it. She is so talented, so gifted, and her words just express what so many people feel internally, but they don't know how to express themselves. I just love her. She's incredible. And the fact that she's from Toronto helps. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you guys are new to my channel or you are just not yet subscribed but you do enjoy my videos, make sure you go ahead and click that subscribe button. I post a ton of videos and I'm going to be uploading every single day for the month of December so you don't want to miss that if you do like my content. If you don't, then you probably do want to miss it. <laughs> and please give this video a big thumbs up if you guys did enjoy it. It makes my heart super, super happy when you guys do that. So please do that. Remember my loves. Do all things with kindness, literally. <laughs> and until next time, I love you guys. <laughs>